DaVinci Resolve also has what I personally called node macros, right? What's a macro? A macro is a series of operations that rather than you doing it by hand, the software will do for you, a series of steps. And it takes a complicated series of things and automates it because it's you're always doing the same thing over and over again. So let me show you the, the node macros that are built into DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna down arrow and take us to shot number two. And an impressive macro is this one here, add splitter combiner node. Now you think this would be one node, splitter combiner node. Well, if I go ahead and click this button, Whoa, what the heck just happened here? Let me make this a little bit smaller. All right, and let's take a look. And if I click and drag, and where it's a hand tool here, I just click and drag and lift it up in order to reposition the node tree. So what's going on? We started here in node number one. And then DaVinci Resolve added a series of nodes for us. First up is the splitter. And look what the splitter does. It takes a single input and breaks it into three outputs. Then as it breaks it into three outputs, it attaches each output to a single serial node. Then those single serial nodes feed a combiner. And notice the splitter has three outputs. The combiner has three inputs. And now each of these serial nodes is put back together. So what precisely are we splitting or combining? Well, we are splitting or combining into the R, G, and B signals. So if I were to go ahead, and I can't actually color correct on a splitter. If I come up here and start pushing my luminance around, I highlight the combiner, and then I'll do the same thing there. And, you know, there's nothing, nothing's happening there because... These are not color correction nodes. These are operational nodes. These are things that are taking multiple serial nodes and either splitting them apart or putting them back together. So if we're gonna do any color correction, it's gonna happen on these individual nodes or on nodes before or after the splitter combiner series. Now, one common example of why we might wanna split out red, green, and blue is what if we just wanted to uh, sharpen one color channel or maybe blur a color channel that might be particularly noisy. Blue tends to be a noisy color channel. So I could come down here into the blue channel, R, G, and B. This, this one would be the blue channel. And I can come into our blur sharpen tool, which we'll be going over in a later chapter. And now I can either start sharpening the blue channel or blurring it up. And then this all gets combined back here in the combiner. And then after the combiner, I can press option S add another serial node and start continuing to color grade and go along my merry way. And now you can see how these node trees can start looking pretty complicated. But once you understand what's going on, you're looking at this saying, oh yeah, okay, I get what's going on in here, splitter, combiner. So it's not as complicated as it looks necessarily the first time you look at this. Let's go to another shot. I'll come down to shot three and show you the other common node macro, which is the add outside. So let's go ahead, let's saturate this up and Let's add a lot of blue in here, but we only want to do all of this inside a window. So again, I'll be going over this, all the details of this in a later chapter. I'm going to use this pull down menu on the viewer to hide the on-screen widget so we can see the result of what's going on here. So I've got a shape that's pushing the interior of that shape blue. I can see that I've got a shape here on the node. Now I want to do a perfect invert of that shape and do a different correction on the outside of that shape. I can go ahead, come up to node, and add outside node. So I'll click, and now look what's happened. It added a serial node, but also hooked up the key signals. And in fact, not only did it hook up this key signal, but it inverted the key signal. So this shape is fed into this serial node and then inverted. So now we can work perfectly on the outside. So I'm gonna take the outside, I'm gonna push it towards yellow. And now this shape in node number two is being controlled by node number one. If I come into here, I'm not seeing any window activated. I double click on node number one. Here's my activated window. I'll turn on my on-screen widget. Now let's rotate this. And now not only have I rotated node number one, but also node number two, because node number one is feeding node number two. And this is a great way if you create a shape or a mask of some kind, and it's feeding multiple serial nodes that are later combined, this is a great way of having one master control and then working on either the inside or outside of that shape on multiple nodes, combine them back up, and now if I go back and tweak that shape, 
it ripples through all the connected nodes. Very powerful feature. So those are the two node macros, as I like to call them, because I can recreate all of this by hand, but with the selection of a menu item, it takes multiple clicks and multiple operations and combines them down into a single operation. And as you work your way through this training series, you'll have plenty of opportunity to go through and do everything you've seen me do here in this movie.